Hello and welcome to FPS Coach. My name is Ron Rambo Kim, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the six aiming motions we use in all our FPS games, a few tips on how to get better at them, and how to practice the aiming motions with the free aim training program Aim Lab. The major reason why professional FPS players and top streamers can switch between FPS games and easily transfer their aim is they figured out their aiming formula. Through trial and error, experimentation, and using their hand-eye coordination to make optimizations, they know exactly how to position their body, aiming arm, and mouse grip to perform the aiming motions with precision and control. All they need to do when playing a new FPS game is to adjust the sensitivity to match their muscle memory and feel. The six major aiming motions are micro, flicking, swiping, smoothing, tracking, and vertical. If you can perform and blend all these aiming motions accurately in any direction, I truly believe you'll have legitimate, reliable aim in any FPS game. Depending on your game of choice, playstyle, sensitivity preference, and personal hand-eye coordination, some of these aiming motions will be more frequently used than others, so it's not entirely necessary to master all these aiming motions. For example, in tactical shooters like CSGO and Valorant, with a slower playstyle with most of the aiming occurring horizontally, it isn't necessary to practice as much of the vertical motion, but more so the flicking and smoothing motion. Whereas in games like Overwatch and Diabotical, the action is significantly faster requiring tons of vertical and swiping motion and less of the smoothing motion. Alright, let's begin by defining each aiming motion, my tips on how to perform them better, and how to practice them in Aim Lab. If you're interested in downloading the custom Aim Lab playlist that I've created for each aiming motion, the names are in the description box and also at the end of the video. Micromotion is used when aiming around a 2 inch square box around the crosshair. For engagements when the target is medium to far distance away, strafing and moving nearby the crosshair, and when sniping. Micromotions are primarily controlled with the fingers and the fingertips, as there isn't much need of the wrists or any of the forearm and elbow. Whether you're a claw grip user with the tips of the fingers on the mouse, or a palm user with the whole length of the fingers on the mouse, one of the keys to micromotions is the placement and pressures of the side fingers. The reason being is that we cannot rely on the mouse 1 and mouse 2 fingers to apply consistent and reliable pressure to prevent any misclicks. So my tip for micromotions is to start by gripping your mouse with only the side fingers and experimenting with various placements and pressures and then placing the mouse 1 and mouse 2 fingers on the mouse. Practice the micromotions and use your feel to make the necessary finger adjustments to fix your misses depending on the direction and if you're under or over shooting. Flicking is used when snapping the crosshair from one point to another with the flick of the hand and wrist. It's an instantaneous action that happens in a blink of an eye. The best wrist flickers have trained their muscle memory with a sensitivity that allows them to flick accurately both left and right up to the entirety of their max wrist bend. Most gamers are pretty accurate near their neutral wrist position, but are less accurate when flicking further away. My tip to help you build your wrist flick muscle memory with your sensitivity is to start by feeling, seeing, and establishing how far the crosshair moves on the screen when bending your wrist to the max left and right. You'll quickly get a feeling and a visual cone of your wrist flick range. By establishing your max wrist flick range, it'll help with your flicks in between your max wrist flicks because if you want to aim your crosshair halfway in the cone, you simply flick your wrist half the max range, or halfway across the mouse pad. The swiping motion is used when you need to quickly aim the crosshair beyond the range of the wrist flick when the target is behind you, to the side, and quickly moving across the whole screen. One of the keys to swiping is the positioning of the elbow relative to your body and the mouse pad. Or in other words, the position of the elbow sets the angle of the forearm and how much of the forearm is on the mouse pad. Just as with establishing your max wrist flick range, if you establish your 180 degree swipes, it will help you gauge your other swipes, especially the half 90 degree swipes. When experimenting with various elbow positions and practicing your 180s, please do be careful as this aiming motion is the most dangerous, as it can tear your shoulder muscles. I'd recommend practicing your swipes if your game absolutely requires it. The smoothing motion is commonly used in tactical slower paced FPS games like CSGO and Valorant, where the crosshair is often locked near the edge of the walls and objects when navigating and revealing angles on the map. The key to good smoothing is being able to aim the crosshair smoothly and steadily in any direction. 
whether you use primarily your wrist, your forearm, or a combination of both, try to position your hand and forearm so that it can glide across the mouse pad as flat as possible. Or in other words, you don't want to position the hand and forearm awkwardly, creating weird angles which makes it difficult to smooth the mouse flat across the pad. The tracking motion is trying to keep your crosshair locked onto a moving target, which is quite tricky when the target can move in any direction and at varying speeds. Similar to the mechanics of smoothing, good tracking is having a grip and aiming arm position that allows you to aim the mouse in any direction in addition to trying to minimize quick and jerky motions. Three major reasons for quick and jerky motions are either too high of a sensitivity, too strong of a grip pressure, and inconsistent grip pressure which all cause the mouse to shake in the hand. When practicing your tracking, try to maintain a consistent grip whether it's strong or soft, and it will help you track smoother and change aiming direction with more stability. Vertical motion is problematic for most people because aiming the crosser up and down requires either moving the hand further or closer to the body or using the space between the hand and the mouse for claw grip users. If your game requires minimal vertical motion, sometimes you can get away with using the loose part of the skin which has a little bit of give to it, especially if you have a higher sensitivity. But if you need more vertical motion, you must be able to move the hand, mouse, and elbow forward and backward. A key to unrestricted vertical motion is the position of your elbow relative to the mouse pad. If your elbow is too far below the pad, the forearm will jam into the table edge creating a friction point, and vice versa. If the elbow is too high, the hand and wrist may push down into the mouse pad which also creates a friction point. When you're practicing your vertical motions, try to feel if you have any of these friction points and experiment with lowering or raising your chair and with the height of your elbow until your hand and forearm can easily shift up and down the mouse pad. If you found these tips helpful, I've created the aiming formula a complete comprehensive video course with everything I've learned from my 20 year career in FPS games to help shortcut your path to reaching your aiming potential. If you're interested in learning more about the course, you can go to www.fpscoach.com.